Hey, what's going on? It's Justin Dickmeyer from engineeringtrainingexam.com. And in this video, we will discuss present work. In this video, we will define the topic of present worth, walk through the general workflow of solving such problems, and jump into working an example of something we may see on the exam. The topic of present worth falls under the main category of engineering economics. Equations, symbols, tables, and information on the various topics covered in engineering economics can be referenced on pages 114 through 120 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, 8th edition, 2nd revision. It has been established in previous videos that money does not have the same value at different points in time. For this reason, we need tools, tables, formulas, and various economic factors to reference when it is necessary to compare two complex alternatives. When we have a number of various receipts and disbursements strung across a period of time, we are able to convert them all, regardless of when they take place in time, into one unique equivalent present value. This is useful analysis to employ when comparing various investment alternatives, when the future benefits of those alternatives and other factors are known. So let's run through the general workflow. The goal of a present worth problem is to convert a series of costs and benefits over a period of time into one equivalent present time value. We may be given a problem that requests that we convert just one series of transactions, or we may be given a problem where we are asked to compare two unique investments, each with individual periods, interest rates, and transactions. The general workflow is the same regardless of whether it is a single or multiple alternative problem. The workflow is, number one, define the various benefits and costs identified for the single or multiple alternatives and the period of the entire investment. Number two, select a desired value for the return on investment or discount rate. This will typically be given in the problem as an interest rate. Number three, using the present worth formulas in the table on page 114, as well as the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, convert the benefits into a present value. And number four, if the present worth isn't greater than zero, then chances are it is not a good investment because that is telling you that the future costs will be greater than the future benefits for that particular investment. So let's run through an example. A construction company wants to purchase a new earth mover. The mover costs $125,000 now to purchase and is projected to save the company $17,000 in annual rent have an annual maintenance cost of $15,000 and a salvage value of $25,000 at the end of its lifespan, which is 12 years. Assuming an 8% interest, would the investment be beneficial to the company? So here's the solution. The goal is to determine what the present value would be of all the future money receipts and disbursements of this particular investment. In this problem, there is an initial investment that is made, as well as various other costs and benefits over the lifespan of the piece of equipment. We can determine the present worth of this investment by using the functional notation version of the present worth formula found in the table on page 114 and referencing the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook. As mentioned earlier, as engineering economic problems get more complicated, it is best to get comfortable using the functional notation version of the equations and referencing the compound interest tables 
as it will lead to a much more efficient use of your time. The first step in solving this problem is to define the identified costs and benefits as well as the overall period of the investment. In this problem, we are given a uniform annual cost, let's say A1, of $17,000, and this is a plus or savings from the rent. We're given a salvage value of $25,000. And this is a plus, a savings at the end of the lifespan. We're given an initial cost of $125,000, and this is a minus and is a cost to purchase. And we're given another uniform annual cost, which we'll say is A2, and that's going to be a negative $15,000, which is the cost to maintain. And finally, we're given the period of 12 years. The next step is to determine the desired rate of return. In this problem, we are given an interest rate of 8%. We now need to determine which present worth formulas we need to solve this problem. We have three items that need to be converted to a present worth. One annual cost, one annual benefit, and a future cost. Therefore, Referencing the table on page 114, we will use the Uniform Series Present Worth formula written in functional notation for present worth, which is P is equal to A times P over A I N, and we'll use the Single Payment Present formula, which is P is equal to F times P over F I N. The term P over A I N and P over F I N can be defined using the given values for the interest and period and the compound interest table starting on page 116 of the supplied reference handbook. So the total present worth of all the future money receipts and disbursements of this particular investment will be P, or present worth, is equal to negative P which is our initial cost, plus A times P over A I N minus A P over A I N plus F times P over F I N. Referencing the compound interest table for 8% on page 119 of the NCEES Supplied Reference Handbook, we lo locate the period N equals 12, which is our far left column, and work our way horizontally and find that P over A I N is equal to 7.5361 and P over F I N is equal to 0 0.3971. So plugging these values into the equation, we get present worth negative $125,000, which is our initial cost, plus 17,000 times 7.5361, which is equal to $128,114, minus our maintenance cost, which is minus $15,000 times 7.5361, which is $113,042. And finally, our salvage cost, which is $25,000, .3971, which is equal to 9928 So our total present worth is going to be negative $100,000. So the present worth of all the investments over the 12-year period is negative $100,000. Therefore, it wouldn't be a wise investment without further investigation into other benefits. So that's it, but here are a couple ways that we can mess up on a problem like this. When these economic problems get more involved, we see that we can encounter multiple costs and benefits over the period of the investment or alternative. For that reason, it could be very easy to disregard or not account for one of these variables, causing our analysis to conclude wrong. 
We could also very easily count a cost as a benefit or a benefit as a cost if we aren't careful. Another common mistake, when we are pressed with time, we could reference the wrong formula or compound interest table. Make sure to refer to the converts column in the table to ensure you are using the correct formula and don't fail to look at the title of the compound interest table you are using just as a safety check that all factors are applicable. Well that's it for this video. Do you know anybody that would benefit from this lesson? If so, let's try to reach out and help others by sharing this video with them. Also, take a second to like this video and leave a comment and tell me how it will help you move forward in your goal of becoming a professional engineer. And finally, type in engineerintrainingexam.com into your URL bar and visit the site to download for free the transcript to this video along with the example problem and solution we worked. While you are there, you can also sign up for the free EIT Academy Bootcamp, 137 pages and over 50 practice problems and solutions to get you on track to passing this exam.